This artwork combines two of my favorite things, watercolor painting and collage. All you're going to need is a set of watercolors. I'm using a cheap set of Prang. Um, thin paper, you don't need expensive watercolor paper for this, and you will need some glue. I recommend just regular Elmer's glue stick and some white paint to create your stars. I'm gonna teach you how to make two watercolor collage landscapes focusing on the principles of perspective. And you get to paint a galaxy first, which is fun all by itself. If you love learning about art, support my channel and subscribe below. To make your watercolor galaxy, start by layering water on your paper. Now, I am using super cheap sketchbook paper, and typically I always recommend to use nice paper. So instead of filling my whole page with paper, because I don't know how long the paper will absorb the water, I'm gonna do a corner at a time, and then you dab your colors into the section that you have wet. So normally I start with one color, but for some reason I'm doing two, and you can see that the water is traveling into the pool of water that you started with first. So you can layer several times depending on the quality of paper. So I'm spreading out this pool of water to the left-hand side of my paper, and then I'm gonna dab in my third color. Sometimes I do this one color at a time, so I would stick to just the blue or the magenta, but because I know I'm doing a night sky where all the colors are gonna swirl and work together, I don't mind dabbing on multiple colors at a time. So you can see that this dull paper makes the colors not as bright as they could be, but it's so mesmerizing, even on cheap paper, to watch the colors just blend and flow to each other. If you feel like it's not working, you need to add more water. So the color will only travel with the water that you applied first, and that is called a wash. A wash is one layer of color or water um, that then you blend into. So I'm going to just dab my three main colors, which is blue, look at that magenta, and green, because I'm going for a northern lights, winter, nighttime sky. So it's a galaxy, but specifically I'm thinking of the northern lights and that beautiful winter vibe. So typically I might not add a green, but if you Google or you've been so lucky to go to the northern lights, you know that there's some like magical green that uh, blends into the sky. So with this, just add and layer colors until you're happy, and I always end with black. So even if you mix your colors as you go, black is going to be the color I do last, and it is the most dominant color. So you can see that it's going to overtake a lot of the colors that you already have. Now, if I were just doing tie-dye or something like that, I might not use black, but this is a nighttime galaxy northern light sky and it's nighttime. So black is a very important color. So I'm not scared of the black running and blending into the colors because it's just gonna make it look that much more natural. You've heard me say a bunch of times that I'm using cheap paper and I will show you one I did on really nice Canson watercolor paper just for a comparison. But if you want your colors to be dull, use a little bit more water. And if you want them to be brighter, overlap more than one time to create more bright colors. Because this is a landscape, it's time to paint some land. Now, we're going to do a value scale using black, and then we're going to collage this paper to create our landscape. So start by doing your darkest black, a strip across all the way your paper horizontally. And this is going to be jet black, and you might have to layer more than one time. So I love this work of art because not only do you get to watercolor and do washes, but you also get to collage, and so it's the best of both worlds. If you're an art teacher like me, and you have short classes, and you're always thinking I wanna give students as many experiences as possible, I love doing this project because you get to combine two concepts into one. You can see the color is blending into each other a little bit, which is perfectly fine. I did leave a little bit of a gap at first, so it wouldn't just completely blend right away. And I do want that top section to be jet black, so I'm gonna overlap it as many times as I think is necessary to get it nice and dark. Now that my galaxy is a little dry, not all the way, I'm going to splatter paint some stars with white acrylic paint. So I dip my small paintbrush in the paint, I dip it in water so it has a little bit more projectile to travel, and then I'm gonna gently tap the paintbrush with the larger paintbrush. Listen to this. I'm not going crazy, I'm gently tapping it slowly so I don't make a huge mess. 
So there's a lot of different techniques you can use for splatter painting, but I find this to be a easy way to make stars without making a huge mess. And again, your watercolor paint doesn't have to be completely dry, just dry enough. So speaking of dry, let both pieces of paper dry completely for the next step. Here is a galaxy I did on a nice Canson piece of paper. I'll put that link in my description box and you can see the colors are brighter, especially look how dark the black is. So whatever you have, you can make work. I actually really like the lightness in the sky. It really reminds me of the Northern Lights. Next, you want to decide, do you want your landscape to be horizontal or vertical? And there's really no right or wrong answer. It really depends on what you're going for, how your paper turned out, and then once you've decided it's time for the scary part, tear your paper to create your landscape. So I tore my black paper first and that's a mistake. This is a teacher fail. And the reason why I'm saying that is with the collage, you wanna start from back to front. So atmospheric perspective is what we're going to be learning about today which is an artist's way of tricking a person into seeing things that when they're far away, they're smaller and lighter in color and less saturated and darker and larger when they're closer up. So you can see my first mountain range, my horizon line, and using the lightest gray. And so that's going to be your horizon line because that's the farthest away from where you would be standing in the landscape. And so as things get farther, the color gets weaker, it gets more gray, less saturated, and lighter in color. So I tore my paper because I want it to look like it has white snow caps, and I'm just randomly tearing it, and now I'm gonna glue it across to create that atmospheric perspective horizon line. You can make yours with more jagged mountain ridges, you could make it softer, but I thought this looked really nice, and I really like the white effect. If you want, you can use scissors and cut it out perfectly, but I really enjoy the randomness of tearing it, and I like the snow effect. So as we're moving forward in our landscape and in our mountain ranges, now I'm moving on to the more medium gray, and I'm going to tear my second mountain range, or second layer of the mountain range, and I want it to get darker as it comes closer. So you can see that there is a change in value, and the mountain range itself, as far as how it dips, I wanna create interest by having it like go up in an area that went behind and back. And like I said before, collage can be a little bit random. I'm not measuring and trying to cut things perfectly. I'm embracing that as I rip and tear my paper, I don't have 100% control over how it's going to look, which could be scary unless I let myself, let it be fun and freeing and just kind of let the paper guide me. So you can see my second layer is darker, and now I'm going to fill in that gap on the right hand, si right hand side, focusing on my middle gray. So you can decide how many mountain range layers you would like. With this, I'm trying to kind of keep it simple. I do have this gap here that I need to fill, and I really like how the black in front is just bold. It's just in your face, and there's not as many snow caps on it, which there would be more detail in the foreground, so that's the area of the artwork or the landscape that's closest to you. And so I tore it a little bit to create a little bit more interest in the texture and in the shape of the mountain range. I really like having these three layers because I feel like I have a foreground, that's what I'm gluing down now, a middle ground, which is the medium gray, and then a background, which is the lighter gray into the horizon line. So I'm gonna keep things pretty simple with this and glue my foreground down, and that's going to be my black, area really creating depth. Now as I'm looking at this, I really love the depth that I created, my atmospheric perspective, and I like the simplicity. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim the edges to make sure it's nice and neat. And I feel like it's missing something, so I'm going to paint a nice moon, or maybe it's a planet. I've been watching a lot of Star Wars lately, and this makes me feel like this is an alien planet. There's something about the green in the sky and the barren landscape. And so it has this like space vibe to it, which I'm really enjoying. So I'm gonna show you another technique that you can do. And this time I'm going to add trees. So I love the simplicity of the last landscape, but for this one, I'm going to show you how to create depth in your landscape by creating winter trees that look like they have snow on them. This galaxy that I made 
has a lot more red in it, no green, so it has that true galaxy vibe. And I'm gonna do similar to what I did before, creating my horizon line, but this time I'm not gonna do mountains. I'm gonna keep it simple, and I'm imagining this is a snowy landscape, so I'm doing a strip of white. So this is just a white piece of paper. You could use copy paper, sketch paper, it does not have to be expensive. And tear it across and glue it across your landscape. I'm choosing to do mine vertically. You can do yours horizontal or vertical, but I like how the vertical really makes the trees the star. And so you wanna go all the way across with that and that's gonna be your horizon line with the snow. And I'm gonna overlap just a few sections focusing mostly on white. So it just looks like a snowy area in this landscape. I'm not really focusing on mountains like I did in the first one. This is more like up close, like you're standing in a valley. I mean, you could put a mountain horizon line, but because I'm gonna put so much detail in my trees, I'm keeping it pretty simple. I like to trim edges and keep things nice and neat before I move on to the next step because collaging can be messy. And so I try to keep everything as organized as possible. Now I'm going to sketch out my trees, focusing on perspective. You do not have to draw them out. I would probably freehand it, but I know my students would rather sketch things out so they know exactly where to put it. So the first tree is the largest. Remember, with perspective, the largest shapes are closest to you. I'm putting a medium shape off to the left and a really small tree in the center. I'm going to outline mine in Sharpie simply so you can see the shapes I'm working with. I would not do this in my personal art. There's no need to do it other than I want you to have the visual effect of what I'm doing since there's so much going on that's distracting with the colors and everything. Hi. So with perspective, you can see I'm large, close to the camera. I walk away. I'm more of a medium size. And then I go all the way to the end of the hallway. Look how small I am. Hello, hello. And as you can see, as I'm walking back, I'm getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Hello again. And I did not change sizes. I am still the same person, but perspective makes it look like as shapes go back, they get smaller. So that's the concept that we're doing with our tree. So collaging your tree can be a little bit messy. So tear small shapes at a time, focusing on triangles. Okay, so I have the perfect tree topper here. And I like to use just the regular Elmer's glue. Mine has purple, so you can see where you've put it, which is a really nice effect. And so I'm gonna build up my tree layer by layer, focusing on organic shapes. Organic shapes are shapes that are found in nature, curved, random lines and edges. You would not have a straight line. You wouldn't get out a pair of scissors and cut it exactly. Now I know I said triangles, but I meant triangular, like cone shaped, not like let me get out my protractor. So I'm leaving my edges white so it looks like snow has been falling and I'm tearing my organic shapes to build up my tree. So a tree is made out of branches of similar shapes. So you wanna keep your branches similar and I'm using the cap of my glue to press down each of the branches because I did it with my fingers the first time and it was a dreadful mistake. So you can see I'm tearing a piece at a time, I'm building, and this is where some of my students really let loose and have fun, and some of them get stressed out. Because collaging is random, and you're building up these organic random shapes, that can be overwhelming for perfectionists. So just try and keep it natural, not, or trees don't always look the same, every branch could be slightly different, but keep your branches in those long kind of triangular shapes that you're going to glue down vertically. Pay attention to your areas of black and your areas of white. You want some white on the inside too. It wouldn't just snow on the edges like an outline. Branches would be sticking and jutting out in different random ways that could collect snow. So this is a really fun um, exercise in creativity. And just keep in mind, yes, it can be a little bit messy. So keep your fingers clean, keep your piles off to the side. So I should say I focus a lot on size. This is my biggest tree because it's in the front, which means it's also my darkest tree for my value scale. So this time I am using the black first, and it's also the tree with the most detail. As trees go back into space, you would lose a lot of the detail because your vision just can't see the detail, a tree that's 20 yards away, as opposed to a tree you're standing right next to. I find this really relaxing, just going in, overlapping, and worst case scenario, if it looks weird, you just go back and lay another shape on top of it. It's almost like doing a scavenger hunt where you're just finding the perfect piece and the perfect place to put it.
If you want your tree to look more snowy, take just blank white paper and tear it and you can add lots of layers of snow depending on how you want your landscape to look. I still want to maintain a lot of darkness in my tree, so I'm putting just a few long layers of white so it looks like dominant branches with snow on them. It feels like winter already. I'm feeling done with this tree, but I can always go back and add more details. So, our medium sized tree is a little bit farther away and you can actually see the bottom of it. So the first tree I went off the edge to make it look even more like it's right in our face. So this tree I'm going to be using the middle grace from the value scale and I'm gonna be doing the exact same concept I did before but in a smaller shape with a lighter color and slightly less detail. I'm really liking the shape of these trees. It definitely has that evergreen tree that you would see maybe at Christmas time. I like how the points or the tops of the trees are pointing to each other. And because there's so much glue on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my smaller tree. This one's gonna be super easy. I'm using my lightest gray, and I'm only gonna put a few overlapping shapes on this one because this is my smallest tree. It's further away, so the color saturation is lighter, which for us, we're using gray, so we're using our lighter gray. And the detail would be less because it's farther away. So not only is it smaller, it's lighter, and it's less detailed. Look at me following all the rules of perspective in my landscape. So if you really wanna push perspective, I'm going to make sure that this tree looks like it's behind the first tree. So I'm getting that nice white point on there, and then I'm gonna put a branch that kinda of comes across into and in front of that smaller tree to really push my depth. I'm happy with the shape of the tree. I'm gonna let the glue dry and I can always go back and make changes. I do want the points of the tree to be distinct. I want that one tree in the front to be taller and then the next tallest tree should be the medium and then the smallest one should be the one in the middle. All right, last step and you might notice, wait, this is a different background. That's because I forgot to film myself doing the trees in this one so I had to redo it. And so like you've seen me do before, I'm going to splatter paint stars. The difference with this one is I'm gonna splatter paint on top of the trees I collaged so it doesn't just look like it's nighttime, it looks like it's snowing. I don't wanna go overboard, so I'm calling this one done. So here's the finished, dry, starry, snowy landscape with trees going back into space. And here's the first simple, almost moon-like landscape with our perspective mountain ranges. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And if you're interested in more tutorials, check these out. And don't forget to check out my website, That Art Teacher, for full-length lesson plans, student examples, and tons of videos.